and we thought about it, that was probably one of the biggest mistakes that we made here. Because... Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk a little bit about us and our journey. Yes, because we realized that we did not do an intro of who we even are before we started our YouTube channel. I'm Mark. And I'm Catherine. So what we wanted to do is just give a little bit of a background on each one of us and then give you the blueprint to how we became digital nomads or... I've been a personal trainer for a decade and a half, for a little over 15 years. I just want to do big things, man, seriously, from the bottom of my heart. I'm going on a new journey, and now today is officially my last day at the USC gym. I just want to say goodbye. I love helping people. I love what I do. I just thought that there was a, a another way to help people on a larger scale, so I decided to go online and started to do online personal training. I went to school for marketing, and I always had a passion with traveling. I I started traveling when I was like 18. Social media has been also a passion of mine to study the ins and outs about social media. The way we met was at the gym. So just a little background about how we came together. About a year, about a year and a half ago. I don't do well with stalkers. And um, I didn't stalk it. And, uh, and so I finally gave in. <laughs> Looking for at the time was we pay a lot of money uh, where we used to live, which is Miami. And I'm sure we'll obviously end up going back at some point. We were almost paying about 2,400 to the rent in Miami is anywhere between 2,400 to 2,600 for one bedroom where we wanted to live. When we started to look at other countries, well, when I had first started to look, I was looking at all the wrong areas. She was actually the educated one with having a background and being a travel agent. We thought it made sense to uh, save up for a year and literally move. Yeah, we yeah. just sold our cars, sold yeah. our furniture. The last minute we quit our jobs. Really just having an adventure every day. It's all a learning experience. Sometimes we're not sure what, what will happen the next day, but Facts. it's always fun to know the not knowing. But we believe that any, anybody should just take a leap of faith and really try to travel the world. You'll really find yourself. You'll get to know your, your likes and dislikes. Yeah, we've learned a lot about ourselves. Yeah. yeah, I learned a lot about her. Yeah, I learned a lot about him. Yeah. <laughs> With that being said, we genuinely just wanted to give like a little bit of a background on both of us. And I, we put together a couple of things on a list of how we ended up here in Bali. And we call it like our blueprint. So yeah. we want to share our blueprint with you, how we made it here to Bali and how we're doing it when you would think it would be so expensive. And it's really within reason when you really think about it. It's, honestly, it's a little bit more affordable than you think. The first one, the first tip will be passport. Right. We recommend that your passport is would expire six months ahead. Some countries won't let you in their country if it's like, if it's going to expire within six months right. or 30 days. It's better to have it renewed and let it expire after 10 years. So you don't have to worry about that. I personally had to get my passport renewed before, before coming before com me being nosy and cleaning his room i saw his passport because he didn't even notice his passport was gonna get yeah. expired so i saw his passport and i'm yeah. like babe it's gonna expire yeah. in like yeah. two months and she called it cleaning <laughs> so phone phone is our second one if you are moving we didn't keep our carrier because out of the country it, it wouldn't keep roaming for a long time it would have blocked the service after a while. Well, we could have kept the number, mm. but we would have had to pay an amount of money each month in order to keep the number. But we couldn't use the phone unless we were gonna pay for those minutes to call back to the United States. So we decided to get rid of our phone, number. our phone numbers. We got a Bali number and just pay Roman here. We thought it was easy because if we do go back to Miami, We'll just get a new a new phone number but it was not because when we thought about it that was probably one of the biggest mistakes that we made here because your phone number is attached to everything mm. facebook to instagram to TikTok to your, your banking your banking your emails 
And when we when we got rid of the numbers, we're like, we're gonna be gone for a year. We're just getting new numbers when we come back. Matter of fact, we might not even want to come back to the states. So we were like, get rid of the number. And then within the first month, we were like, wow. Wait. That was a mistake. You're gonna send the code to my number? <laughs> um, yeah. I don't have that number anymore. Yeah. So then it was really hard for us to either log into our banking to log into any like money transfer, like Cash App, Venmo. Well, we still had the emails. The, the point is, if you're gonna be gone longer than a month or um, or 60 days, keep the number. Just keep pay the, the number. 10 or $15. It makes life Wait. so much easier just yeah, to keep yeah, that yeah. phone number. Yeah, mail address. So we are from America and we do get mail still. To you forward your mailing? your mom, your dad, a significant other, a close friend. You can then set it up where you can see what mail comes in, but the mail has to go somewhere. So you can either pay for a box at the post office so the mail can sit there until you get back or it can go to someone's home. But you, you would have to pay for that box. And if you don't have a box that you, you can afford or you don't want a box, because after a while you might stack up of mails. Um, and if you don't have somebody you trust with with sending foreign your mail, you can do it digital where a person will open your mail, take a picture, and literally you could see all your mail online and whatever is important and trash, it will be up to you. We didn't tend to do that because we wanted to save money and we have family members that could literally do that for us if needed. Exactly. Banking. So getting your banking in order, I know we kind of briefly talked about this on a point or two ago. You want to make sure you're letting your bank know mm -hmm. that you're moving out of the country. Also, you want to make sure that whatever card that you're using, international, because they'll charge you more to swipe in certain, at certain locations or even just being out of the country. Mm -hmm. So she had some issues in the very beginning with just logging into her banking. Um, I know a VPN was something that helped out a lot. The banking, you definitely want to get that in order for coming because you don't want to get into a situation where your car gets declined mm -hmm. because the bank doesn't know that you're out of the, the country. country. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we completely forgot about mm -hmm. that. We, we didn't think of it. It was way easier to do that before because one, we didn't have a phone number to call our banking. Right. Two, couldn't log into my banking. So I had to tell my mom to do it for me. It was a half. It was it a draw. Was, it was to do the same exact thing just recently. Well, I had to uh, get one of my closest friends to just log into my own banking to tell me what my balance. Yeah. Because I, I, I couldn't see it after logging out because it thinks that somebody's trying to hack it from a different country. Mm -hmm. So let your bank know that you're moving out for yeah. however long. Yeah. Travel light. Travel light. Yes. We try to put our whole lives that was in America in like four luggages and two book bags uh -huh. and just moved out of the country. In reality, we noticed that we don't use half of the stuff we brought. No, we even like gave away a whole bunch of stuff already. Yeah, yeah. And we're giving her this whole bag. Yes. For her and her family. Our stuff we kind of like shouldn't have brought anyway, but yeah. <laughs> but there's a yeah. reason why we brought it. Yeah. <laughs> And it was just so heavy because now we're thinking about traveling to other countries and carrying four to, and two book bags. I know. Just, we haven't even done it, but just the thought of it, it sounds crazy. Yeah, I get it now. The whole backpacking across the world makes way more sense. You do not need as much clothes as you think. I bought yeah. like six pairs of shoes. Everybody wears flip flops here. I didn't need half of my shoes. You might need a pair of boots, workout shoes and sandals. That's it. We can do it all over again. I would literally have a a carry-on and a book bag. And a book bag. That's it. Same. That's it. Same. Like, and the, the carry-on might be too much. Like, <laughs> but, we even want to go lighter than that. Now that we've realized that we don't need a lot of stuff. No. We're just spoiled to wanting more stuff. Yeah. Traveling light is like a big stress reliever. Facts. Scooter license is next. Oh, so you know more about scooter. Got it. <laughs> if you're coming as solo traveler or as a couple, as a solo traveler, you definitely probably want to get your scooter license living in a place like Bali. If you want to travel and see all these beautiful places like Semiachengu, Uluwatu, I would suggest that you get your scooter license while you're in the States. It would probably be a little easier 
uh, than trying to get it out here. Mm -hmm. You can get it out here from my understanding, from what I've learned, but I did get my motorcycle license in the States. Then once you get that license, you have to go to a AAA and you have to get an international driver's permit. To get that international driver's permit is good for one year. Visa. Mm. Coming to Bali, we did a little bit of research and our best bet was B211 visa, which is two months and then you could renew it three times. So in total of six months. Found out that if you want to renew it, you don't have to leave the island. You could stay in the island and renew it again and stay even longer. That cost is for both of us uh, $380, but there is visa on arrival. Um, you do need a return flight or uh, a flight to go somewhere else if you want to do the visa on arrival, and that's 30 days. And you can renew it, I believe, three or two times. Also, other visas like Keto visas and touristy visa, which is more long term. Unless you're investing on the island or buying a property or wanting to work or want to build a business, it's better to get those type of visas. Savings. Mm. <laughs> We decided this two months before we actually bought the ticket and started saving. Mm -hmm. So we had a total of like eight, eight to nine months of saving. There's a lot coming to Bali mm -hmm. that will literally last us the whole year. You have a job already online, perfect, but still have savings for emergencies. You kind of want to do the math. She's really good at spreadsheets. So do a spreadsheet or just do basic math. It also helps. I just kind of understand how much money you would personally need to come out here. So, for example, if the rent was 200, ours is like 160 or 170 a month. Our rent, 100 and yeah, 160, 170 dollars a month in rent. I know it's crazy. Kind of put that number together, you can almost travel to Bali for a whole year. We literally paid less than four dollars, under four dollars. Yeah, for two meals, two drinks. Need I say, probably less than like seven to six thousand if you really budget you could do the whole year like that mm -hmm. sell everything <laughs> so we would suggest that you sell everything mm -hmm. that was just our model because we didn't know when we were coming back so we were i was a little torn between getting rid of some of my cars he had three yeah i was a little torn i didn't know when we was going to come back i didn't know if we were gonna how long we were gonna stay i really wasn't sure so one of the things she said to me was we can always get a new car plus it'll be a year older anyway so it kind of made sense so we decided to sell everything we thought by putting stuff in storage it was going to cost us any between to put all of our stuff the beds and the couches and the tvs because at the time we were living separate so she had furniture and i had furniture so to put it all together was going to cost us really what we were going to spend in rent yeah so it didn't make sense to keep mm -hmm. so that actually added to the savings as well too by the way so we decided to get rid of every single thing that we could possibly think of mm -hmm. yeah we thought it was best for us everybody's situation is different Fact. and what i learned from him was if you take out the old new comes in yeah true. <laughs> ordering things online so i am very big into holistic healing and I like to order certain like herbs and things like that that come from uh, places in Florida. I don't mean those type of herbs. I mean like like healthy herbs. Like, healthy. Yeah, healthy herbs. <laughs> and, um, and to get the cost of it to ship was obviously more because it had to get here. But yeah. then customs almost, I felt like they almost charged me what it cost for the product. If you're coming and you have like, whether it's medications or herbs or certain odorants or toothpaste or whatever, bring that stuff that you need mm -hmm. that you can't order through Amazon because it's even gonna cost more, more to, yeah. to get it through Amazon. You should bring those things with you. So if you think you're gonna be out for three months, I would suggest that you get it for three months. Research, research, and more research. <laughs> we thought we did enough research. Right. No, there's more research to be done right. and hopefully this video will be one of your research because there's just so many questions. Once you're already on the island, there's like new things that we just popped up, like the banking, like the phone number. Right. So all those things we wish we knew before coming. Never know enough, especially moving out of a country that you have no idea what, you don't speak the language. Some of them do speak the language here, they do speak English. What we call in Indonesian or Balinese, uh, we call that Banjar. Even that can be a bit of a border sometimes. 
So yeah, I agree. Research. And our last tip is knowing the time zone. <laughs> He works online, so he trains clients online, but from America. And knowing the time zone that when he trains at night, they're, they're training in the morning. Right. And <laughs> when he trains in the morning, they're training at night. Or sleeping at night. Time zone is soup. It's literally the night and day. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever time it is for you right now, if, it's, if you're watching this video and it's 1 a.m., it is 1 p.m. here. You just need to know the time zone. Yeah, the time yeah, zone. yeah. So that depending on your job. It, like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So those are twelve tips that we hope that it will help you on your next journey, and this could be one of your research that you would look forward to. Yeah. And I hope that those tips help. Uh, that was our blueprint to how we got here. If you guys can do us a favor, subscribe to this channel, hit the thumbs up if you like this video, and hit the bell for more notifications. And until next time. Yes. Thank you for watching.